All right, um, Semeni Ode Signet. I work for the Bird Liberia in the Republic of Liberia and um, the National Executive Director and the Team Leader. Yeah, Bird Liberia stands for the Brighter Initiative for Revitalization and Development, that which is a conglomeration of a youth-driven institution that stands to advocate for the marginalized and the deprived youth in the country. Actually, um, uh, from our institution, we feel that uh, Liberia is left behind in terms of uh, advocacy, and we as young people have decided to stand up to see how best we can advocate and make Liberia to meet the international roadmap. That is through five thematics area. We got agriculture, sustainable agriculture, and we got uh, great child education. We also got youth empowerment. We also got child protection, health and sanitation as well. Uh, like I said a few minutes ago, we are involved into the sustainable agriculture, that which we have like secure uh, 20 some more acres of land to see how best we can uh, advocate to our international partners to see how best we can start some processing of agro you know businesses for single mothers in the republic because we we see a lot of single mothers that find it difficult to get their needs and we being a young youth driven institution we decided to do this advocacy to see how best they can meet their needs Okay. And we also talk about youth youth empowerment. Yeah. Current, currently, as we speak, we also involved into youth empowerment. We initiated a program of uh, information to technology for young people in the country. And currently, we got uh, a, a, a training being conducted for close to 150 young people that are attending by the day. So all of these programs, you know, we depends on our partners and we depend on on the international community to see how best they can support us with their little means and way out to see how best young people can meet you know, the societal mm -hmm. fitness. Yes, uh, one of the problems that young people face in the country is, uh, honestly, on a broader perspective, is uh, dependency syndrome. A lot of young people in the country don't have the means and it depends on others, other their parents, other friends, other you know, uh, other people out there to see how best they can get some assistance to meet their needs, and that which we see it as a burden to the society, and that gives us the enthusiasm to see the the increasing in our advocacy to help these people in those very five thematic areas that I just mentioned about. The issue of human rights in a country is a very tedious, you know, uh, issue that has to deal with both the national government and and, and that of uh, Liberians as well. Though we see the national government, they are doing their best to see how best they can mitigate some of the the human rights challenges in the country, but there are yet still many to be done. Most especially where we got uh, 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 young people being, you know, used of their right and they are not being benefited is an issue that we try to advocate on to see how best that can be curtailed. But the more we advocate, you know, the more another one spark up. But yes, still we are still perseverance in our advocacy to see how bad they are curtailed. On the part of the government, that is the gender ministry that represents the issue of uh, the, the, the human rights issue. They have stood up, like I said, actually, but yet there are a lot of violations that have been occurring on a daily basis, and that we stand up to it to see how best we all can join the habit cartel. In Liberia, we have observed over the, the years a very serious human rights problems that include uh, ritualistic killing, police abuse, arbitrary arrest, the denial of process, 
violence against women, domestic violence, female genital mutilation. These are all issues that we feel is a huge human rights issue and we, we must advocate to see how best they are in you know, the Um, uh, if, 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 if I should explain to you the reasons of uh, the occurrence of some of these human rights issues, definitely I will tell you it is because of uh, uh, self-needs, because those perpetrators we see them perpetuating the act only to to get their needs, to, to, to benefit them, you know, not the societal. So they narrow it down to themselves. Why we advocate to, to see the improvement for the societal war? Yes, um, uh, that's a very splendid question. Uh, there have been a lot of difficulties. There have been a lot of difficulties. Imagine Bert Liberia were founded since 2014 purposely to advocate and, mit and mitigate some of the challenges in uh, both rural and urban communities. But uh, what we have seen over the years is that to get the support of even institutions that are within the Republic to fast track our advocacy in respect to Human rights, it has been very challenging for us. And even the international institutions to get their support has been a very challenging. And, and you know, most especially when we are not mobile, mobile wide, it gets it difficult for us to move in and out speedily to, to contribute to some of these challenges or some of these arising issues. So it has been very difficult for us. But yes, still, we've been perseverance, like I said earlier. These are things that happen. And we know that with these challenges, that cannot stop us from doing what we're supposed to do for our people. We will keep advocating to see how best our people can, can, can see some level of impact on our advocacy. But thank you so much. Uh, actually, there have been you know, uh, very limited sources of the organization in our advocacy. And uh, these sources include um, uh, acres of land are donated to the institution by one uh, humanitarian within the Republic to see how best we can initiate uh, a cassava processing, you know, in, in in that area to see how best we can help the the less fortunate people. But yes, you with it, with the donation of that land, without the support of funding and some materials, why definitely we cannot meet you know, that target. So the farmland is there and we, 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 we still advocate to see how best we can meet those challenges. And moreover, we like managed to partner with uh, one institution called SR Sustainable Innovation Initiative that is uh, residing in a state that uh, we're able to build us our website and that is a, a new success. Right now we, we got a functional website managed by them. And after that, also, we got a partnership with uh, Aniki Foundation that is currently helping us with a uh, few computers to see how best we can initiate uh, 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 information technology knowledge to young people. Like I told you, we got close to 150 young people that we contributing knowledge to on a daily basis in, in respect to information technology and that which we see it being, you know, a huge success to the institution. Oh yes, yes, yes. The community, the community have been very open. On a serious note, they have done their best. They have, in fact, the community chairman, in fact, the young people themselves went in a field to to do high level of mobilization to bring in people. And in fact, the 150 person that we have now, it is the young people that did such a mobilization. And it's been, it been quite interesting with the young people working with them in diverse areas and up to now. Even now, as I speak, uh, we got a lot of young people that are already sit there to see how best they can go through their particle. Because currently, we own a particle. We have uh, four different sections on a daily basis. And after this section, by uh, God's grace, November, we'll be graduating the first batch. And after the first graduation of the first batch, we'll be initiating the second cycle. That which will include additional 150 young people from diverse areas within Mosserado, Republic of Liberia, to see how best we can capacitate them for societal fitness.